we finally got to test all of the raids in phase one of Wrath of the Lich King Classic. And we got to go in there with characters that don't even have full pre-raid bits to see exactly how hard are they gonna be? How hard is it gonna be to kill Sartherion with three drakes up? One of the most coveted and challenging experiences in all of the early half of Wrath of the Lich King. And what classes are shining the most throughout these raids? What classes are looking better than we expected or what classes are just playing the way we expected? How is everything panning out so far? First of all, the hardest part of the raid was probably Thaddeus, other than Sartherion Three Drakes. This was an encounter that actually was a bit challenging, but once we got it down, we got very close to killing it quite a few times, and this is actually the only encounter today of all of the tier raids from this entire phase that we didn't actually go in and get beta first. But it still isn't the hardest encounter, because realistically, if you are able to clear all of these raids pretty simply, with the gear that they give you on the stock characters, which is also very mediocre compared to the gear you can even have as pre-raid bis, then that means we don't necessarily have the most challenging of raids. The raids also boasted quite a bit of their own bugs. Hygen is one of the encounters where the actual dance you have to do is currently not in the game, although it does actually hit pets, so your pets will die. And that's actually something I should mention. All AoE abilities are hitting and killing pets, by the way. Your pets are supposed to, in Wrath of the Lich King, have 85, I believe, percent reduced damage from any sort of AoE ability, but that is currently not in the game. Another fight that was surprisingly easy with this base gear was the Four Horsemen encounter. We were actually able to do the private server strategy of stacking three of these horsemen all together while one healer stayed off on its own tanking the last horseman and we just used bloodlust and dps these down and then we're able to go to the last horseman now trash felt really good throughout this raid it is basically the same level that trash is always supposed to be for next ramus it does feel like it can be punishing if you overestimate yourself, but realistically, you're gonna be able to pull really, really big in the raid. You can see I just did 20k DPS on the first pull. You're gonna be able to pull as massive as you want, and this is gonna be really something that leads towards speed running. It's not necessarily aggressively challenging, but it is something that lets us kind of think of different ways to pull as much as possible and deal with it without dying. So this is something I'm personally excited about, although it does does mean that the raid is relatively easy still being there. Now, just as a reference to show you guys how the DPS was throughout the entire raid, right here you can see Spoon was on top, and this is a dual wield unholy DK who has massive burst. Let me just show you what this gargoyle looks like with full haste. Look at the damage coming out from this gargoyle. In this first burst, he's doing twice the DPS of anyone else. Now, to be honest, he also does have the best gear in this entire raid. He is almost fully pre-raid bis with a few epic items, quite a few epic, obviously, from pre-raid bis. So he is very, very geared, but even then, he is doing way more damage than anybody else in this raid. Also, on overall, we're seeing Warlocks perform really well, Rogues perform really well, and all three of these characters, again, are characters that did have their characters leveled up and fully have almost full pre-raid bits. And then My Hunter is right below them, and Rugs right below that as well. And both of these characters are characters with the base gear that they give you as you log into the game. Now, to give you an idea of how geared these characters are, just to show you, you basically have one Kirin Tor ring, but you can, with normal normal gold, upgrade that to having two Kirin Tor rings that are maxed out. And some pieces are pre-raid bis, but you don't have things like a scope, you don't have things like leg enchants, you don't have things like shoulder and real helm enchants, you have this stamina enchant that they give you. So 
a realistic basis is you're going in with, let's say, halfway to pre-raid Biss and not fully enchanted. You also have really, really weak arrows comparatively to what you're gonna be running on your first encounter through next. With that being said, you're still gonna have a ton of fun this phase. This phase is gonna be a lot about either speed runs or ults. You're not necessarily gonna see the most ridiculous amounts of challenges from this raid, which I know is something that a lot of people were asking for, trying to make this phase a little bit more challenging. It's definitely not gonna be surprisingly challenging. We're realistically gonna to be able to blow through the raids other than start there on three drakes with pre-bis and with pre-bis we'll still be able to do three drakes we did it today so your gear is currently a lot weaker than what we're gonna be able to expect to have on launch of the raids because they did announce that the raids will come out at a certain time after the actual expansion release so you're gonna have time to get your full pre-bis probably on two characters now as for the release actually blizzard messed up today and actually put a release date on their website. Yes, that's right. Blizzard literally put a release date on their website. The 26th of September, you can see it right here. I did get a screen share before they actually changed it on their website, going back from the 26th of September to the Lich King returns in 2022. I'm not sure who messed this one up, but it is crazy. So we will see the Lich King come out at the end of September, most likely. And lastly, before I leave you, let me just tell you guys what I think is surprisingly strong or really the classes that are performing really well already without having too much gear. And those are gonna be Warlocks, Unholy DK, mainly dueled Unholy DK. Spoon was destroying everybody on single target. Once we got Nib into the run a little bit later, let me see if this is the log. Once we got Nib into the run a little bit later as Frost DK, he almost did the exact same overall DPS, 400 less in fact, with actually way worse gear. So we might still see Frost DK beat it out on overall damage, but in single target situations, Unholy had insane bursts with a good snapshot on their gargoyle. Hunters on overall damage are crazy powerful, and I'm specifically talking about a specific marksman hunter build that i've been theory crafting and i'll try to put out a video on but i've made this marksman theory craft build that is definitely going to be one of the most powerful overall damage builds in the entire game warlocks are always really strong and rogues will scale really well as they get geared especially for a single target but they're doing really well on overall as well those are the classes I think that are really shining. Here's some logs from another full clear where we can see the top DPS is actually from Spellhance. This is another class that's really, really powerful because you have a ton of AoE cleave damage throughout the entirety of the raid. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I will put out a guide breaking down the Marksman Hunter build I've been working on and the play style because I've seen a lot of hunters doing way less damage, but when hunters are played correctly, they are insanely, insanely powerful. Also, I'll put out a short thing on Unholy Dual Wheel DK, but if you want to know more about that, just YouTube White Wolf, and you'll find a ton of amazing information on it. I'll see you guys all on the next one, and have a great weekend. Good luck on the beta testing.